Board of Supervisors meeting. Certification of compliance with the open meeting law. The agenda was posted on the 12th of May at 2 p.m. Tonight we have special guests, uh, Troop 885 from St. Paul's Lutheran School in Sheboygan Falls, um, led by former scout leader and scout master Jim Van Akron, is going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. So, gentlemen, would you come forward, please? <coughs> Thank you very much. Roll call. Twenty one supervisors present. Thank you. Approval of the April eighteenth, two thousand seventeen journal. Supervisor Winkle. Motion approved. Thank you, Supervisor Winkle. <coughs> Supervisor Uraner. Second that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Uraner. Any discussion? All those in favor, vote aye. Opposed, nay. That motion is approved unanimously. Consideration of appointment by chairperson. To the county board, Kurt Brower of Sunflower Avenue in Sheboygan. Just a couple of comments uh, on that. Uh, Kurt was one of eight applicants. Uh, we had some really wonderful people who applied for the position. Uh, Vice Chairman Marthenzi and I interviewed all eight. Uh, then I brought two back, although there were a number of those eight that would have made a very good supervisor, I believe. And uh, had to pick one. Can't pick all, all eight, unfortunately. So uh, Kurt is my choice to uh, fill Jack Van Dick's orange seat. All right, Mr. No. Correct. Yeah. Supervisor Koch. Make a motion to approve. Thank you, Supervisor Koch. Supervisor Obler. Support that, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Supervisor Obler. Any discussion? Questions? Okay, all those in favor, vote aye. Opposed, nay. That motion is approved unanimously. Thank you very much. Now, um, the administration of the oath of office by County Clerk John Dolson. Mr. Brower, you want to come forward, please? Constitution of the United States. Swear that I will support. Support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And will faithfully and impartially discharge. And will faithfully and partially discharge the duties of the office. The duties in the office. County Board Supervisor District 10. County Board Supervisor District 10. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. So help me guide. So help me guide. Right. Uh, here, right here, please. <coughs> I think the 
take your seat. Thank you. Congratulations, Kurt, and welcome aboard. Now, if you would push your attend button, makes it official. Thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, consideration of appointment by the Executive Committee. To the Transportation Committee, Mark Winkle, and the Law Committee, Robert Siegelbauer. Supervisor Gehring. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll move for approval. Thank you, Supervisor Gehring. Supervisor Glavin. Second that motion, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Supervisor Glavin. Any discussion? Supervisor Baumgart. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the uh, Jack Van Dixtern was on the Health and Human Services uh, Committee, and we are one short, and I was wondering if you were going to be uh, uh, replacing him. Uh, yes, uh, that is where Kurt will fill in. He will take Jack's position. Relative to the transportation, and there was a domino that with uh, Supervisor Winkle going there, um, I had about six people ask me to be on transportation. That's always a, an interesting place to be, and I thought it should be a veteran position. Uh, so I asked Supervisor Winkle. There were other good people who could have been there. And he said, fine, which means I need to, to get him off of law. And Supervisor Zuckerbauer has one committee at this point, so then the idea was that he'd go on to the law committee. Did you review my uh, application for the uh, um, uh, transportation department? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't, I didn't uh, I know you're, you're teasing, so that's fine. Thank you. Any other questions or discussion? All those in favor, vote aye. Those opposed, nay. Yes. Oh, yeah, they were. yeah. Motions approved unanimously. And you know, I, I'm going to look at how we how we do this too. I think relative to like Kurt's position, he can't he can go to the meetings to the Health and Human Services, but he can't vote yet because it has to come through June. Maybe that should be just tied together in that instance or something like that. So. I don't know. We'll make a note of that for, for next year or something like that. It's just my thought because there's, I'm not sure why we have this delay. I mean, I understand that's the way we have to do it, but just a thought. So, Mr. Chair. Yes. The, the delay is because uh, if the board didn't ratify the nomination of uh, right, Supervisor Brower, he couldn't be on any committee. No, I, I get that. I get that. But I'm saying if he gets appointed to one, I, I would, right. it'd be nice if he could be immediately there. And it's not criticism. It's just the idea that it seems to make more sense. So that's my thought. Supervisor Prochek. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If it would be in order, could the floor make a motion to uh, appoint to have that appointment go through this evening? I'll, I'll rely on Carl there. Uh, that would be a motion to suspend the rules to, well, I... Uh, you're suspending the rules to get it out of the control of the executive committee and then back to the full board. So yes, it's doable with a two-thirds vote. Supervisor Project. So I have a motion to suspend the rules to uh, introduce a, a motion to have Supervisor Brower appointed to the uh, Health and Human Service Committee. I would so move. That requires a second. Supervisor Uraner. I second that motion. <coughs> any other dis any discussion? Supervisor Baumgart. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. As head of the uh, Health and Human Services Committee, <coughs> it would be. Uh, um, nice and, and uh, helpful if uh, he was able to uh, vote uh, uh, as soon as possible, and so I would support uh, the uh, motion. Thank you, Supervisor Baumgart. We're going to need a second. Pardon, Supervisor, pardon. We need a second to yeah. set this up. Oh, second. I thought you said we need a second. No. I'm so sorry. Can you suspend the rules, Carl, to have Supervisor Brower be appointed to Health and Human Services? Right. Thank you. There is no debate on that. It's just a simple up or down vote. Once we're ready. Are we good? Two thirds based on attendance? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Do you have a question? I just have a question. Okay. In Supervisor words, Bemis. In other words, we can uh, change the rules even though it's not on the agenda. 
it, as a parliamentary motion, it's always you're always able to suspend the rules. And we can do that in committee meetings too. Then, in, in committee meetings, you can always uh, bring a motion to suspend the rules. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Bemis. Any other questions? Yeah. As Supervisor Winkle pointed out to me, there's no debate. Okay, we're vote. Okay, either I or nay. That motion is approved. Twenty-one yes, one nil. Thank you. Um, consideration of appointment by chairperson to Veteran Service Commission, Jennifer Sampson. You need to now vote on the. Oh, you, you right. suspended the rules. I'm sorry. To come on board. So you, you need a motion and second to have Supervisor Brower placed on the committee. Okay, Supervisor Koch. I'll make the motion to place Supervisor Brower on the Health and Human Service Committee. Thank you, Supervisor Koch. Supervisor Rayner. I second that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Rayner. Any other? Is that debatable? Yeah. Any questions or debate? <laughs> okay, all those in favor, vote aye. Those opposed, nay. That motion is approved unanimously. Thank you. Okay, now the consideration of appointment by the Chairperson Veterans Service Commission. All right, Jennifer Sampson of Sheboygan. Supervisor Otten. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move for approval of the appointment by the Chairman. Thank you, Supervisor Otten. Supervisor Koch? Second. Thank you, Supervisor Koch. Any discussion? If not, please vote aye or nay. That motion is approved unanimously. Thank you. Consideration of appointments by County Administrator. To Affirmative Action Commission, Eric Fellhaber, a reappointment, and Dion Knopp, a reappointment. Supervisor Gehring. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move to concur with the appointments. Thank you, Supervisor Gehring. Supervisor Testrodi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll second the motion. Thank you, Supervisor Testrodi. Any discussion? All those in favor, vote aye. Opposed, nay. That motion is approved unanimously. Thank you. Uh, presentations. We have Sarah. I should have practiced your name. <laughs> I did not. Pardon? Targison. Sarah Targison. I'm sorry. I apologize for that. Is here as a 4-H youth development educator with some 4-H ambassadors. Sarah? Good evening. I'm going to actually let my 4-H ambassadors speak uh, first, and we're going to have uh, Kristen Rauch get us started um, with some words about her experiences in the 4-H Youth Development Program. Okay. So as Sarah said, I'm Kristen Rauch, and I'm the Vice President of the R-Town Orioles 4-H Club. This is my eighth and sadly last year in 4-H, and I've learned many life skills throughout the years. I've learned soft skills that I can use in the workplace, including resume building and interview skills. With 4-H, I have traveled to Madison to meet with legislators to discuss the UW and 4-H budgets. And I have met people from around the state and county, excuse me, around the state and country, while on the American Spirit Experience and at National 4-H Congress. I've also learned some more diverse and interesting skills like coppersmithing floral arrangements and how to show llamas and alpacas at the county fair. On a side note, when you're showing a llama at a llama show, the animal and the exhibitor have to go over jumps simultaneously. So you can bring that up in a conversation sometime. But in my opinion, the most important thing that I've learned through 4-H is public speaking. When I first joined 4-H in the fifth grade, I would not have been able to speak in front of an entire, even a small group of people that I knew very well. And I'm up here now. So thank you, 4-H. 4-H um, has also influenced me in other ways, thanks to the amazing leadership in the county photography project that has led me to take 
four years of photography classes in high school and the fantastic leadership I have experienced through 4-H has inspired me to be the best leader that I can be. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Kristen. Hi, my name is Emily Oppenheimer and I am a 4-H ambassador. I'm currently in fourth grade and I am 10 years old. You're probably wondering how long I've been in 4-H. Well, it feels like I've been in 4-H forever, but my mom says I started being a clover bud when I was in kindergarten. I think I was five years old. Clover buds are for kids who are younger than third grade and they get to leave the official meeting and do fun things like crafts and games. I'd like to talk to you about how 4-H has changed me and made me a better person. Being a 4-H ambassador has taught me many different public speaking tips, all of which I am using right now. T such as not to speak with food in your mouth or chew gum, to enunciate clearly and stand up straight and tall. We also have learned other helpful skills in ambassador meetings, like computer skills, graphic design, and learning facts about current and past 4-H information. I'm also more comfortable meeting new people and making new friends without feeling nervous. I have had loads of different opportunities to make new friends in 4-H, especially at the county level. One of my favorite examples of this is Anything Goes. Anything Goes happens on the last day of the fair, or of the county fair, and anyone in 4-H can participate. We compete against other teams doing fun and sometimes messy stuff, like egg drops, playing in shaving cream with our noses and toes, and crawling across the barn floor like a caterpillar, and lots of other goofy games. <coughs> Another important thing 4-H has taught me is to accept constructive criticism and learn from it. This happens a lot of different ways in 4-H. Of course, one way is during the fair. I have displayed many projects in the fair, and each time I have to talk to a judge and discuss what I did well and what I could have done better. Sometimes I don't agree with them, but that's okay. It's all part of the process. I've also participated in music and drum in the Music and Drama Festival, where I got pointers from special judges from the community. I like to hear how I could improve my skills or have a better outcome in future projects. There are other festivals I may attend in the future to display my piano playing and acting ability. Speaking of Music and Drama Festival, one of the things I like most about 4-H is that it's an opportunity for an outlet in music and drama. There are tons of different experiences for kids to be part of. I have been in lots of skits which are super fun. I really enjoy being in skits at Enchanted Forest, which is at Camp Riverside during Halloween. We get to dress up and entertain people who attend, both from 4-H and the community. We even get to give out candy to the kids. I love to sing, dance, and act. And I am so glad I'm in 4-H and get to do all these things with my 4-H friends. Another thing I love about 4-H is all the interesting things I learn in my chosen projects. I am learning how to sew, crochet, bake, do origami, become a better photographer, decorate cakes, draw, and shoot archery. If I stick with it, these skills will help me even as I grow up. I am hoping that 4-H helps me continue to improve my organizational skills and prioritizing skills. I am not the neatest person. 4-H helps me to stay organized with my project binder, which I have to keep filled out and current. It should also be neat and complete. This shows the projects I am involved in, the meetings I attend, and any club or county functions I go to. At the end of the year, I turn it into my club leader, and she goes through to see how well I've done. Let's just say there is usually room for improvement. 
4-H has also helped me learn to prioritize what I think is important. Sometimes I have to choose one project over another because of scheduling conflicts. I really have to think about what is important to me and make the right choice. I also have to be aware of deadlines and make sure I complete my projects on time. That has taught me to never procrastinate, which helps me get through school assignments too. As I get older, I have lots of things I want to do in 4-H. This year I'm going to summer camp and I am so excited. I will get to do all kinds of fun activities there that I enjoy, like swimming, crafts, archery, and having campfires. I am sure there will be so much more I can't even imagine. I also hope to hold an office in my club after I'm old enough. I could be president and learn how to run parliamentary procedure style meetings or the secretary and take notes. I could even be the treasurer and learn how to balance and keep an accurate checkbook. Even now I'm able to participate in meetings by making motions, approving motions, and voting on the club er, and voting on things the club might do and how we spend our money. I might even be able to take a trip with 4-H or earn a scholarship to college. <coughs> to summarize, I think 4-H has made me a well-rounded kid. I've already learned so much, and there's so much more to see and do. Don't you wish you could be in 4-H, too? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Emily. Sarah? I bet you do wish you could be in 4-H, and you can. We always need adult leaders. Uh, I'm going to do something tonight that I don't do very often. I'm going to talk with you without having written this out ahead of time. But there is a clear beginning, middle, and end, so don't worry. Uh, I want to talk to you tonight about the research from Tufts University that says that 4-H members are four times more likely to engage in their communities than their peers. This is not coincidence, and I want to share with you the things that I do as a 4-H educator at UW Extension to make sure that I can stand here and proudly share that research with you today and how it applies to Sheboygan County youth. It starts in October. We have 33 4-H clubs in Sheboygan County, and I have about 12 project and other 4-H groups. They send me their adult leaderships, uh, their adult leaders in October, and their officers. So all of these young people and the officer positions that they're elected to with those groups. And I teach them, specifically I teach them how to be presidents and vice presidents and take on the, the responsibilities that they've been elected to in that role. We also go through volunteer leadership kind of training and uh, prepare them for the things that they're going to be doing as group decision making throughout the year. That's in October. In November, I teach a statewide volunteer training opportunity for both adults and young people. Um, in this last year, it was in Green Lake, Wisconsin. And I taught these leaders across the state parliamentary procedure. And parliamentary procedure, as you know, is one of those skills that uh, it's like another language. And so, you guys are so fortunate to have Carl here. Um, our, our clubs don't have Carl. They have Sarah, somehow, by extension. Um, and so I teach these officers and these leaders how to go through parliamentary procedure, knowing that it's one of those foundations of our democracy. And when our legislators and elected officials are getting together, this is the language that you speak, uh, among other languages. And so um, that is our next step of the year of how we um, teach young people to be civically engaged. Throughout the winter and spring months, I work with the uh, American Legion to coordinate and uh, prepare for a program called Youth Government Day. Um, this year, we were very proud to be able to host almost 140 high school students from around Sheboygan County um, here in this county boardroom and throughout the departments, uh, specifically the departments of elected officials in Sheboygan County. These students toured each of those departments learned a little bit about the services that are offered there and um, again about their elected officials and and helped prepare them to be more engaged citizens in the future some of them are just 
months or years away from uh, practicing um, their democracy through the voting process. Uh, tonight, it's May, I bring you 4-H ambassadors. I teach them how to engage in conversations with adults. I teach adults how to engage in meaningful conversations with young people. Um, I help uh, support the, uh, people in sharing things that are important to them with people who make decisions about those programs and those activities. I love June. In June, I go with 44 of my closest high school friends from throughout this region out east. We go to Napanee, Indiana, to Amish Acres. We go to Valley Forge in Pennsylvania. We go to Philadelphia. We walk the paths that our forefathers of this country walked, and we learn about the the principles that they built our democracy on. Uh, we go to New York, we go to Boston, we go to Lexington, Concord, we walk the revolutionary road. Um, we do a little whale watching and some lobster eating too, but um, then we uh, also have secured passports and there's nothing more meaningful for young people to learn about uh, our country and um, what we have here than to learn how to leave it and how to come back. Uh, through that passport, getting those passports, we go up to Old Fort Erie in Canada and then um, come back that night and drive all the way home. And this is called the American Spirit Experience that Kristen spoke about and Jeremiah Ortiz has also been on this uh, experience with us. Um, so uh, learning about engaging civically um, through the freedoms that our forefathers have, have created for us. Throughout the summer and early fall months, I uh, work with our Leaders Association. Uh, we have 357 enrolled leaders in the 4-H Youth <coughs> Development Program in Sheboygan County. And these leaders make decisions about their own bylaws, about their policies and procedures, and they manage a budget of $175,000 that provides the key operational expenses for the 4-H Youth Development Program. And so it's not just about young people, but it's about adults and helping them become actively engaged in their um, communities through something that is meaningful to them. So when I say 4-H four, four members are four times more likely to engage in their communities and, and be civically active, it's not by accident. It's through their hard work, it's through the work of our volunteers, and it's through the educators at UW Extension. And so I appreciate your support for UW Extension, and I appreciate your support of the 4-H Youth Development Program. I would like to end our time here today by saying the 4-H Pledge. So if Jeremiah would come on up, um, we did bring our flag with us today, and I'd like you to rise, and we will, um, uh, encourage our Boy Scouts to join us <laughs> with the 4-H Pledge. If you uh, know it, say it along. Otherwise, watermelon, watermelon works too. <laughs> I pledge my head to clearer thinking, my heart to greater loyalty, my hands to larger service, and my health to better living for my club, my community, my country, and my world. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sarah and 4-Hers, and thank you for the reception earlier tonight on behalf of the county board. Thank you. Our next presentation from Brad Vigood, uh, Robert W. Baird, our bond council. You got a tough act to follow, Brad, the 4-Hers. That's a tough group to follow. Uh, Brad, you may not realize it, but you were originally going to be first, but they brought us cookies. <laughs> that up. So there's a presentation that was handed out just before the meeting on everyone's desk. I'll walk through this and answer questions. The county was out in the bond market this morning up until about 10.30 or so taking orders for a note issue, for the, uh, a $10 million note issue. Uh, there were so many orders received that the interest rates that Baird had initially proposed out to the investing public were actually reduced. So what I have uh, here is a summary of the resolution you'll be considering a little later in your agenda and an outline of what those rates look like. Uh, 
By way of summary, these are general obligation promissory notes, issue size of $10 million. Funds will be available on June 13th, that's the closing date, uh, that the funds will be wired to the county. Principal payments are annually on May 1st of 2018 through May 1st of 2027. And the final two principal payments are eligible to be called at the county's option beginning on May 1st, 2025. Uh, the Moody's rating that was assigned was an affirmation of your existing bond rating at AA2, and the true interest cost is 2.06%. This financing is going to fund your 2017 capital projects and then also the highway transportation projects. And in terms of the final results here, Everything that I'm showing you tonight is much better than what was initially uh, presented to the Finance Committee and to the County Board as we are going through this planning process. The next page after the summary provides an update of the long-term capital plan. The only issue that you're really taking action on this evening is towards the left-hand side, the $10 million promissory note issue. The principal and interest payments that I've detailed reflect the final payments that are available that will be locked in tonight. Everything to the right-hand side of that is really uh, placeholders for planning purposes and all any future issue would come back to the full county board for your authorization before proceeding. But with the rates on this new issue, along with the anticipated rates going into 2020 or 2018, uh, the total principal and interest that would fund your highway transportation project or complex and the 17 and 18 CIP, it's estimated to be somewhere between $325,000 to $500,000 less than what we had talked about just a few months ago uh, because of this very favorable interest rate this evening. And then once you get, once your highway transportation complex is completed, that second financing finished next year, implemented next year, you'd see the peak year for principal and interest payments on the combined debt of the county, that would be already in 2019, where it would peak. We've stepped into that, that peak level. But from there, it's really pretty encouraging, by 2020 and thereafter, the debt starts to fall off pretty rapidly, very significantly, <coughs> because there's, you've targeted much lower borrowing amounts moving forward you know, once you're past um, uh, financing this, this comp, uh, the highway transportation complex. I think the key takeaway there, and we presented this in our discussions with Moody's, is that the county was very diligent in creating a plan, a, a, a meaningful and a reasonable plan, and we've demonstrated to Moody's that you intend to you know, stick with this plan and manage the future debt budget of the county. And the, the complete rating report from Moody's is attached. Uh, you know, with, we saw such strong demand from investors this morning. A large portion, large reason for that, in my opinion, is because of the very strong finances of the county. This report specifically calls out on, on what's labeled as page five towards the bottom, that your, the county's financial oper operations have been resulting in improved and, and solid reserves. So, and that's coming from an independent outside agency that's evaluating the credit characteristics of the county. Moody's goes on to talk about your uh, surpluses in five of the last six years. Very, again, very positive takeaways for the investing public to consider uh, before deciding the interest rates uh, on the debt. So I won't walk through the entire report, but overall, I think this is a positive report. It outlines that the county has uh, plans in place. We've made Moody's aware of your sales tax and the, sale, the plan for the use of sales tax revenues, how you're managing that, uh, you know, that new component of your, of your budget. So overall, I think excellent results. Come back next year and finalize the funding for that transportation project and, and, and have another update at that time. So with that, I'd be glad to answer questions or, or go into additional detail. You notice this will be on the agenda also, resolution number two. But okay. any questions for Brad at this point? Thank you, Brad. Okay, thank you. Next, we have public addresses. There are none tonight. Thank you. Letters, communications, and announcements. I have a handful of resolutions. The first one is a resolution from Outagamie County Board of Supervisors regarding election recounts and aggrieved parties. I will receive that for information. Next, there are three resolutions, all identical, from Dunn, Jackson, and St. Croix counties. 
regarding nonpartisan procedures for redistricting. We'll also receive that for information. All of these have been ones we've had before and we've dealt with. And finally, I have a resolution from Walworth County Board of Supervisors regarding unemployment compensation rules. We'll also receive that for information. Thank you, John. That's it. County Administrator's Report. Adam? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. Last week was I mean, an interesting week in that I was asked to participate in three different presentation opportunities and uh, it reflected really well in Sheboygan County and I wanted to very briefly share it with you. The Lake Michigan Great Lakes stakeholders had a meeting here last week and Aaron Brault and I went and presented the overview of the cleanup of the Sheboygan River Harbor, the habitat restoration, ultimately the ability of the county and the city and all those involved to leverage about a hundred million dollars to improve the quality of our water and stream and river and uh, Lake Michigan and, and there was just a lot of I think impress people in the room from around the region on the role of the county board and the county as a whole. So my compliments to you as well as Aaron Brault for the work on that. I also was participate, asked to participate uh, for a UW Sheboygan friend raiser, not fundraiser, but friend raiser that was held at Acuity last Thursday night. There were about 120 people from around the county at this. Uh, Mr. Ben Salzman was kind enough not only to host it, but to share the beautiful facility that they have. But the focus of the evening was to talk about UW Sheboygan and the incredible value that brings to our community, that most of the students that go there are deemed non-traditional, most of them work full or part-time jobs, the average age is 22 or older, many of them are first generation college students, and the vast majority of them stay here when they graduate here. But it was, it was a nice evening to raise awareness in the community about our facility and the tremendous partnership we have with the, the state of Sheboygan, uh, with the state of Wisconsin as well as the other businesses that have helped develop the Acuity Technology Center, the Broad Science Edition, the Engineering Lab, good work happening out there. And at that event I saw Charlie Conrardi who is a member of the UW Sheboygan Foundation. Many of you may not be aware of that but Charlie's been on the foundation for a number of years, represents the county board very well and has helped make good things happen. And the next evening, Friday night, we celebrated a 100th birthday of Rotary. And there was Charlie Conrardi in the audience as well. We had about a hundred. All the parties, Charlie. Yes. <laughs> See, he's, he, sorry. <laughs> he gets out and about. I was very impressed to see him. And that evening, not only did we celebrate a hundred years that the Sheboygan County Rotary has been here and many of the achievements along the way, but uh, Dick, Dick Bemis and the Bemis Company were recognized for their strong leadership in the community. So it was, it was a good week and an opportunity for all involved to shine. Tonight is an opportunity to shine as well because we have three county board supervisors who are being recognized this evening with service award pins. So if Chairman Wagner and Vice Chairman Marthenzi would join me. And we're going to start with a 15-year veteran. With, would Mr. Brian Hoffman please come forward? Supervisor Hoffman was elected to the county, county board in 2002. Brian has served on the Human Resources Committee and Law Committee and is presently serving as Vice Chairperson of the Health Care Centers Committee and Health and Human Services Committee. And I sought some input from folks like Rochelle Valeski and Tom Agabrecht and other department heads when I prepared these remarks. So I want to give them credit for assisting with the content. Uh, Brian truly cares for the residents at Rocky Knoll and certainly members of the community who need short-term rehabilitation. And in fact, when a personal family member was in need of rehab services in Brian's family, he chose Rocky Knoll and was able to see firsthand the care and the quality services that we provide and have provided over the years in part thanks to Brian's support and leadership on the committee. In addition to the Health Care Centers Committee, Brian has served on the Health and Human Services Committee and he has demonstrated a ready compassion for the people served, has been an advocate for the services they sometimes require, most recently evidenced in his support for the creation of our drug and alcohol treatment court. 
that we've heard about and we'll learn more about at our leadership forum coming up soon. But Brian was an advocate of that, as was Supervisor Jim Baumgart and the other members of the Health and Human Services Committee. Brian's years as an educator and his capacity for empathy have combined to make him not only a valuable and contributing member of the Health and Human Services Department's Oversight Committee, but as an ally in the department's mission. So please join Chairman Wagner, Marthenzi, and myself in congratulating Brian for 15 years of dedicated public service to the people of Sheboygan County. Congratulations. <laughs> Supervisor Jim Glavin, would you please come forward? Like Supervisor Brian Hoffman, Supervisor Jim Glavin was elected in 2002, <coughs> celebrating his 15th year anniversary on the county board. Jim has served on the Planning, Resources, <coughs> Agriculture, and Extension Committee, and is presently serving as the Vice Chair of the Transportation Committee and Chairman of the Property Committee. Supervisor Glavin has been a strong advocate for Building Services Department infrastructure improvements. Over the years, he has supported significant enhancements to UW-Sheboygan, including, as I mentioned earlier, the Plenko Engineering Center, the Acuity Technology Center, and the Broad Science Edition. In addition, Supervisor Glavin supported the Health and Human Services Lobby Edition, the Combined Dispatch Center, and the new Taylor Park Shelter. I think in particular, that's one he, he stayed after, and ultimately a beautiful facility was established. As a member of the Transportation Committee, Supervisor Glavin has also been a strong supporter of many of the county's largest transportation projects, including the relocation of County Trunk Highway LS, which was no small achievement, and most recently, the new transportation complex. There have been so many good things that have happened under the oversight of the Transportation Committee and the Property Committee, and Jim Glavin has been there all along. So please join Chairman Wagner, Vice Chairman Marthenzi, in being recognizing Supervisor Jim <coughs> Glavin for 15 years of dedicated service to the people of Sheboygan County. And the third and final for this evening with Supervisor Mark Winkle. Please join us. No, the other Mark Winkle. <laughs> <laughs> Supervisor Mark Winkle was elected to the county board in 1992. I always felt that Mark and George Marthensi drank from the fountain of youth. <laughs> they haven't aged in my eyes. Since then, since 1992, Mark has served on the Property Committee, the Jail Building Committee, the Resources Committee, the Healthcare Building Committee, the Executive Committee, the Finance Committee, the Transportation Committee, and the Law Committee. And as you know, at one point he was elected to serve as the Vice Chairman of the County Board. I've known Mark for the 19 years that I've been here. And suffice it to say, the 25 years that he has been involved good things have happened in this community. He has been a strong supporter of law enforcement and tr improving our transportation system and airport and also serves as the vice chair for the Eastern Wisconsin Railroad Consortium. And you're still doing that, are you not? Or not, was that change just made? Not. So does, suffice it to say, transportation is in your wheelhouse. He has also been a strong fiscal conservative and recently supported the county's one half percent sales tax, which I know was not easy for him to swallow, but he did it because of the support for local roads, bridges, <coughs> reducing borrowing long term, and obviously continuing our track record of being fiscally responsible. During Mark's tenure in the Property Committee, he was also involved with consolidating the health care centers, which is a challenging part of our history. When we pri sold comprehensive, privatized Sunny Ridge, consolidated three facilities into one, building at UW-Sheboygan campus, the Commons, construction in a, of this very administration building across the street, and erecting the detention center. Mark has been very engaged. He has been a strong proponent of law enforcement and emergency response. This was demonstrated by his support for the Combined Dispatch Center and Radio Upgrade Project. He is genuinely concerned about the safety and well-being for emergency responders and the people that we serve. 
One of the things that he took a leadership charge on was supporting the sheriff in establishing that emergency vehicle that some of us question, that Bearcat. The Bearcat has already been put to use, and I can't tell you, I, I, I don't get a lot of feedback from law enforcement officers, but I've gotten feedback consistently about the Bearcat as a tool that they appreciate and will help protect them and save lives. And in brief, Supervisor Winkle has just always impressed me as a no-nonsense, common-sense guy. I don't know anybody who can run a committee meeting faster. He's very concise, stays after it. He has good heart, he has good intentions, and he has an uncanny ability to remember numbers. I don't know how he does that. So it has been a pleasure to work with you, Mr. Winkle, for the last 20 years. Please recognize Mark for 25 years of service. So speaking of making good things happen, Chris Lewinsky, our IT director, is going to pull up a brief little transportation complex update that Supervisor Glavin and Supervisor Winkle, as well as a number of others, are obviously overseeing and helping to be successful. I want to compliment Elaine Bosman for quickly uh, pulling this together for me this afternoon. Greg Schnell provided the, the photos. Uh, if you could go to the first picture, I think folks will really enjoy this one. <laughs> Who do you recognize there? <laughs> left to right, you have, or I'm sorry, right to left, right to left, Brian Olson, who has just been outstanding with leadership at the Transportation Department. He's obviously Greg's right-hand man and, and really has been valuable in this project and just in overall. A uh, good person, obviously learning a lot, but a good person. Ed Harvey, who has been our surveyor for a number of years, is actually getting close to retirement, but certainly wants to see this project through, and he continues to do good work for us. Charlie Conrardi, I think some of you have heard of him. Joe Whitman, he works for Quashus. He's the one fourth to the, your left going to the right, Dick Bemis. Al Bosman, Roger Destrudi, yours truly, German Tom Wagner, Transportation Director Greg Schnell, and then on the right there's Matt Quashus. And the one person I wish was in the photo but and was there today but isn't, he's holding the camera, Jim Tabeast. So that uh, was the <coughs> posse that got together for a uh, nice tour a couple few weeks ago and, and we had a chance to get out there and and turn the shovel, so it's a nice day. Next slide, please. As you know, in November, we started moving earthwork out there, and you have a, two news releases on your desks this evening that went out this afternoon, one about the road work that's in play, and then one about this facility. And I can't say enough about our, our team, our staff. They have done all the site work and about 95% of it is now done. And it's remarkable that you know, our own staff have been able to not only do all this work, but also created some efficiencies that we had two gravel pits just down the road. So uh, next slide, please. So they got the site going. It's our trucks, our equipment, our workforce, and uh, I just, I tip my hat to them. I know Greg is really pleased with the job they've done out there. Next slide, please. This is looking at it from J, um, north of the property. There's, what's the building there? Plank Co, right across the street? What is that little business there, anybody? Elanco. Elanco. What is it? Elanco. Elanco, Elanco, thank you. Elanco is right across the street. If you get a chance, you know, drive on out there sometime and you can park right in their parking lot if you, if you don't sit there too long. And what a beautiful view you have of of the entire development and occasionally I'll do that just to, to check in and, and kind of observe for a few minutes in awe of the good work being done. Next slide please. This is uh, some of the detention or retention work that's being done. Again our crew, all of our our men and women out there doing the work. Next slide please. Uh, Quashus uh, just last week started putting in the footings or the main foundation for the walls that'll tip up. Next slide, please. 
Uh, this is a photo from 67. Next slide, please. <coughs> and then this is the final one again back from J, where now the footings have all been put in on the outside and we'll be tipping up the, the main concrete walls. That's going to start after Memorial Weekend. You'll see that happening through the month of July. And at the same time that's happening, we're also going to be doing all the utility work. And I, I think most people are well aware of it. The Health Care Centers Committee has been very supportive. We're going to be tapping into the Rocky Knoll Water Tower which saves significant dollars rather than drilling a well there. That water tower, talk about vision, when the county board put that water tower up, uh, it is far larger than our need. So we have more than adequate capacity to use that. And then we're also tapping into the sewer line from Rocky Knoll that goes down to the Plymouth treatment facility. So a lot of good work happening there and also uh, believe it or not, as you know, we have the goal of doing 30 miles a year of overlay now that we have additional revenue to work with. And Greg just shared this afternoon that we've already completed eight of those 30 miles. So his team, thanks to some good weather, has already uh, been rolling and making things happen. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I'll conclude. Thank you. Thank you very much, Adam. Okay, consideration of committee reports, executive committee, resolution number two. Regarding authorizing the issuance and sale of $10 million worth of general obligation promissory notes. Of course, this is what Brad had spoken about. We'll need two, two motions on this. Uh, John, do you have the sample language ready or Cheryl or somebody? First, we need a motion to adopt the resolution as amended per the committee report and a second. Supervisor Uraner? Yes, I uh, would be happy to adopt the motion that takes out um, the pieces that we've been covering already, that we have covered with the sales tax, which is the, uh, um, the uh, road maintenance costs. I can't find what page that's on either. But the amendment that's in the packet somewhere here among the 84 pages. The language that Cheryl had talked about is that yes. you're talking about? Okay. Is there a second to that? Supervisor Winkle? I'm sorry. Second. Thank you, Supervisor Winkle. Any uh, discussion? No discussion. Sorry. <laughs> All those in favor, vote aye. Or no, no, no. Now we need a motion to. I thought we had to take a vote first. <laughs> yeah. Now we need a motion now what to you told amend me. the resolution by replacing the original resolution with the revised resolution that was put on your desks. Okay, Supervisor Yarner. I, I move that we revise the motion with the information provided on our desk. Thank you, Supervisor Rayner. Supervisor Winkle. Second. Thank you, Supervisor Winkle. Okay, we're going to vote on the amendment first, then. Right. Okay. D debate first, if there is any debate. On just the amendment. On just the amendment. Yes, on just the amendment. Okay. If not, all those in favor, vote aye. Opposed, nay. The motion is approved unanimously. Now it's the main one. Okay. Now it's the main uh, main motion, which we have an, a motion on already, right? So is there any debate on that? Supervisor Uraner. I'm gonna support this motion, but I probably will not support the one in, in 2018. We've, we've had uh, three years running now where we've uh, needed to uh, have larger bonding. Um, 2015, we had 9.5 million, 16, 11 million, now 17, another 10 million. So three years running where we've suspended our rules. I, I realize part of that is the transportation complex, and that's been mentioned now in two of the resolutions in 16 and here now again in 17. So um, th this is the three year running where we've, we've suspended, where we've uh, uh, changed our, our rules in order to allow for larger bonding, but I'm not gonna be in favor of 2018 where we're gonna have the four year process of doing the same. We originally changed our bond resolution to every two years, bond for $11 million, and not four consecutive years of bonding beyond that. Thank you, Supervisor Rainer. Anyone else? 
If not, please put your I or nay button. Motion's approved, 21 yes, one no. Thank you. Resolution number three. Regarding supporting state funding to local public health agencies for communicable disease control, recommendation to adopt. Supervisor Gehring. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move for adoption of resolution number three. Supervisor Gehring. Supervisor Baumgart. I second. Thank you, Supervisor Baumgart. Any discussion? If not, please push your I or nay button. That motion's approved unanimously. Thank you. Consideration of committee reports, finance committee, resolution number four. Regarding authorizing sale of Pennsylvania Avenue parcel, recommendation to adopt. Supervisor Winkle. Motion to adopt. Thank you, Supervisor Winkle. Supervisor Testrudi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll second the motion. Thank you, Supervisor Testrudi. Any discussion or questions? Supervisor Urainer. Yes, thank you, Chairman Wagner. I'm, I'm very glad we are getting rid of this, these properties. Um, at the time, we had this uh, resolution to purchase the three proper's, properties. Um, I pulled that resolution because I remember saying, why do we need parking space? And uh, then it was, it was interesting to hear um, that was what was part of the resolution, but this was actually really planned for economic development. And um, I, so I'm glad we're getting rid of, rid of it, Th those properties. I, uh, I hope we don't uh, make a practice of getting into economic development such as that. Um, we're basically breaking even on this. We're not making really any money. So uh, if we looked on page 57, it doesn't include a number of costs that we are incurring. One is the commissions of about 13,000 estimated, and I don't believe it includes the uh, 5,000 um, title costs. So I don't know if that's worth uh, worth adjusting for the financial ramifications of this. Um, basically, we're, we're we're not really making money on this project when um, when you consider the the whole the whole piece and the, and the various costs. I wish we could also get rid of the uh, 520 Penn Avenue, which is another home, and, and I don't know how many other properties we've acquired, but uh, I know we've acquired um, a number of properties over the last few years. So I'm supporting this. Uh, um, it's in my mind, it's not. We're not. We don't really aren't, aren't going to have much money when you look at all the added costs to be spending on another building. We, we'll have to work through that with. Um, without having a, just a profit from this because you really add in those costs, there, there is very little profit. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Rayner. Supervisor Epping. Thank you, Chairman Rayner. My question on this is, correct me if I'm wrong, this is the parking lot on, on 7th in Pennsylvania? Yes. Uh, didn't we buy that uh, for the purpose of uh, of parking area to uh, uh, work with our uh, county parking area? And if so, I, I observe plenty of county vehicles being parked up there. What, what do we plan on doing with uh, their parking areas? And I thought we were also working on accumulating prop properties along Pennsylvania Avenue for possible expansion of our county facilities. Am I wrong on any of these items? Thank you, Supervisor Epping. Adam, you want to respond to some of those, I think? There are a few questions in there, Supervisor Epping. Uh, we received the property originally to help the, uh, to reduce the cost of the land that the city purchased from us for the police department. So that was part of a trade mechanism there. And it was a, a completed parking lot at that time, and obviously we've made some use of it. For, for those of you who have driven by that, more often than not, there's never any more than six or seven vehicles there. And Aaron Brault, our planning director, uh, looked at 
a number of snapshots of our parking down here at the courthouse. And as you know, when all five courts are in session, we can be pretty busy. But more often than not, there's more than adequate <coughs> room for parking in our back parking lot. And we also have some side street <coughs> parking. So we're in good shape there. And just a couple of quick clarifications. Uh, the purchase price is $432,000, which was the appraised value. And what we're told from city officials is one of the highest selling one acre pieces of property in the city. There's no public financing for it. We removed three old facilities and now we're looking at an eight to ten million dollar economic development opportunity. We may not be in this line of, line of work on a routine basis, but if we have an opportunity to further improve our community and we can be part of that, I think we're glad to do so. And the, the cost of it will more than cover the expenses associated provide some additional revenue to replace the storage building. And from an ongoing revenue standpoint, and this is just the one year snapshot, ongoing the county, if it's an eight to $10 million development, and it may be even more than that, uh, we're, well, we took the more conservative. If it's eight million alone, the county will receive $45,000 in revenue annually. The city will receive $76,000 in revenue annually and the school district will receive $87,000 in revenue annually for a little over $200,000 of tax base every year going forward. So I think we have a pretty good opportunity here. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. Uh, Supervisor Otten, did right. you? Okay, <laughs> you got it. Thank you. I don't see any lights. Anybody else? Okay, if not. Please push your I or nay button. The motion is approved, 21 yes, one no. Thank you. I'll turn over the gavel to Vice Chairman Marthenzi. Resolutions introduced. Resolution numbers, number five from Planning Ag and Extension Committee. Requesting stewardship Local assistance grant for mountain bike and hiking trail system in Rocky Knoll. Resolution number five is referred to the Finance Committee. Resolution number six from Planning, Resources, Ag and Extension Committee. Regarding approving Amsterdam Dunes Conservation Easement Amendment. Uh, resolution number six is referred to the Finance Committee. Uh, we have no ordinances to introduce tonight and adjournment is next on the agenda. Supervisor Bemis. I move we adjourn. Motion to adjourn, is there a second? Supervisor Winkle. Second. Motion second to adjourn. All in favor, press your I button. <laughs> Supervisor Dan. <laughs> Supervisor Dan. Supervisor Bauer. Steve. Steve. Try your button again. Okay, thank you. We stand adjourned.